Hey there, strangers. It's time for another 2 p.m. PST Twitch stream. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim. And today we are getting back into, well, my game, GGG, Cool Skills and Goblins, using Unity and C Sharp. But today is going to be a special day. Well, it might be a couple special weeks, <laughs> given that uh, my expertise does not lie in uh, the field of art. Um, I'm not an artist by any means. I don't pretend to be. Um, I know where my limitations are, and... Um, I learned fairly quickly that I didn't really ha have a um, strong desire for art, and even then, um, the art that I made was pretty generic at best. Um, now, that doesn't mean to say that you can't develop it over time and develop something good from it. I just never had that desire um, when I was fairly young. So, um, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was inhibited a little bit by, uh, uh, you know, not having that many art supplies or whatnot, but, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I learned the importance of mathematics, got into computer science, and, uh, developed what, you know, developed an average as my professor would say, programming skills. Yeah, let me go to webcam online right at the moment. All right, so, um, so if you saw last week, um, I made the attempt to try to use what assets I had in order to generate some kind of animation to it. Thinking to myself, well, um, if I'm going to be having these guys move, let's, let's get the animations in place now instead of later to see whether or not I'm actually going to be having some issues with the animations while movement or whatnot, you know, being able to kind of control um, what, you know, the, the, the movement of the AI agents are obviously key to the game, okay, that that is without a doubt, you know, essential, okay, we're, we're not, we're not losing sight of that, okay, however, um, the art assets that I do have for at this moment of time, which I'm thankful for because, you know, they're, they're, they gave me a, they gave me an, an uh, they gave me a foundation so that I can see what was necessary to continue my work. Okay. And, um, anyone that wants to use said, um, art assets, I highly encourage you to, um, you know, don't feel like you absolutely need to create your own set of graphics in order to get a creation out there. You don't need to, okay? You can use um, what other artists have done. Don't feel like, um, uh, you absolutely have to make your own graphics for your own game. You don't need to. Okay, there's there's plenty of art assets out there that can 
that if you want to generate your own game, you're welcome to. However, here's the thing. For this, I, I do want my own set of graphics for this. I want to... I want it to be able to kind of stand out on its own. Okay, I don't want to be... Um, I don't necessarily want it to be something that can be mistaken for another game. Okay. Um, so that means that I'm going to need to uh, generate my own, own graphics. Now, um, I would love to commission someone to work on the art for it. I just don't have the money. That's 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 the heart of it. I don't have the money to pay someone to draw graphics for me right at the moment. Okay. If if the game somehow becomes a hit or something like that, then I can pay afterwards, but I can't pay now. So um and that's to say whether or not it becomes a hit. Okay, I'm 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 a realistic man. Okay, you know, um, you're you, we're talking about hundreds of indie games being generated on almost on a daily basis. You know, sometimes from teams, sometimes from individuals. All of which they're always they're all trying to get a part of that. Um, that slice, you know, get that um, pie slice, you know, to keep them moving forward, keep them growing, okay, and I get that, okay, and am I going to be creating the next big, biggest game ever? Ah, no one really knows, and even then, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful, but at the same time, I'm not going to say that, oh, yes, definitely. Um, even AAA games have their failures, so I'm, I'm going to be working on this not to be a failure, but at the same time, I also have to be realistic as well, so... Um, but drink water. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing seeing that I can't pay for an artist to do this, I have to do it myself. Okay. Which, um, as much as I'd, I'd say that I'm going to be a great artist, I have what's called essential tremors, which means that um, you know my 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 right hand, if you can kind of see it right at the moment, is kind of wiggling. You you can't. I mean, it's 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 slightly slightly there. But it's enough to give me pause for anything uh, really precise. You know, it's it's like a you know think think of a, a, you know like uh, just for example Doctor Strange. Okay, if anyone saw that movie, okay. Um, he got into a vehicle accident. Um, there was a lot of damage to his hands to the point where he could not perform his skills as a brain surgeon. Hence, you know, he goes into a full-on depression and whatnot. Okay. Um, essential tremors is not Parkinson's. Okay, so uh, while it might get it might get bad from time to time. Okay. Um, it's it's not. You can still live 
with it. Um, I'm I mean I'm an, I'm a right-handed, you know, uh, individual. So, um, so this this is kind of problematic for me a little bit. Um, but you know, I'm not going to be shaving myself with a blade. Not that I really ever did. Um, never really taught, actually. Um, but still, um, I'm gonna have some difficulty with drawing art. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain of it. I'm gonna have some amount of difficulty trying to draw the art assets that I need for this. But it's what I'm gonna have to do. I can't commission anything, so. Um, so the next step is trying to figure out, well, what am I going to produce? Okay, well, I need to draw 2D sprites in order to uh, get them to kind of wander around the map, okay? Um, now, the question is, uh, do I draw them as pixelated art, or is there something else going on? Now, I've heard um, now I've, I've I've been in well. I can't say that I've been in the gaming industry. I've only done one job um, in the gaming industry, but you know, I've 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 been around it enough that I've learned some details. Okay, so uh, am I a full-on expert? No, uh, but um, you you learn certain things over time. Okay, especially if you've if you've put the time and effort into it. Okay. Um, one of the uh, one thing that you learn about the art is that you can go with the pixel graphics, but if you look into the pixel graphics, the more you blow up an image the more pixelated it gets okay it's 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 square bo um, boxes that are built in such a way where you can imitate a drawing if you push the image further away from you okay but as you get closer you can see those square boxes now with colors being a wide range nowadays um you can you can do a lot of work on trying to design or you know um i mean how there there's been times where people have taken images from like t v shows or something along those lines and recreated like the Mona Lisa for example, okay they just took those little bits of, you know, uh, screenshots from a TV show like The Simpsons or something like that. And they were able to kind of recreate that graphic, you know, by using those small little pixels to kind of recreate a, a larger image, okay? So you can do pixelated graphics. Now, Am I going to be allowing the player to really zoom in on each of these um, uh, AI characters? I mean, maybe. I might have to stop. I might have to stop the camera at some point. You know, have a. You know, allow for them to kind of zoom out to get the full map or zoom in to like maybe a, a tile or two or something like that if they really wanted to um 
but I I should make sure that it stops. Okay, there's a um, the player can only go so close before it stops or goes so far before it stops. Okay, if they get so close, they're going to be able to see those pixel and pixels. Okay, and um, I'm not sure if I really want that for the first game. So, um, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, what you call vector graphics. Now, um, you might be wondering, uh, well, for those of you that aren't even aware of what's, you know, what I'm really talking about, um, vector is allowing the mathematics to draw the curves in certain uh, in certain visuals. Okay, so you're using vec vector based mathematics in order to draw the image. Okay, you're not you're not relying on squares anymore. You're line A. You're relying on um, well, in a sense, in a sense, calculus to get to get the curve and to draw the colors underneath that curve. Okay, that's that's what you know you can do with calculus. Okay, um, so. Now, do you know? I'm not saying that artists need to learn calculus in order to draw these graphics. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, what I'm saying is is that the computer itself is able to figure out. You know, the if you're if you're drawing a curve, okay, it will see that curve and be able to determine. Hey, if you're moving it to the side, it will keep that curve every single time. That's that's what the um, you know what the calculus is based off. You know, you can you can reform that curve each and every single frame. So as it's as it's moving, the um, it will be able to. Um, mathematically calculate out that curve again, draw the colors associated with that, you know, reposition it, okay, and it will look the same as it did the previous one, just moved ever so slightly, okay. Or in our eyes, it's moved, but in a sense, it's just repositioned. Okay, you're you're removing the one image from this spot, putting it here again, using the same kind of mathematics. Okay, so uh, now. Um, artists don't need to worry about that. Okay, that's that's all behind the scenes. That's what the engine, or that's what the, um, that's what you know, programmers like me are doing to help said artists. Okay, so don't think of it. Don't think that um, we're forcing artists to learn calculus. No, we, we don't. We don't need to force them to do the calculus. Okay, not everybody understands calculus. I get it. I understand. No worries. Um, you know, I had some difficulty learning it. Um, but um, I found a teacher that knew how to explain it. And that's that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, finding someone that actually understands the mathematics, they can kind of explain it. 
you know, whether whether it's taught one way or another, um, you know, that's that's one of the positives of mathematics. Okay, if you're not understanding it one way, you can kind of change up your um, explanation to try to reach who you're explaining it to. Okay, it doesn't always work. Okay, because um, everybody learns in their own fashion, one way or another. Okay, so um, so if you aren't really understanding the mathematics behind something, okay, don't be afraid to ask a teacher, ask a fellow student, ask. Um, you know, maybe not even your own teacher, maybe, you know, uh, a, a mentor or uh, someone else that knows mathematics, okay? It might not be the one teacher that you're having, might be in, you know, might be another math teacher that you appreciate their explanations, okay? It happens, okay? Don't, don't be afraid to go and ask for for help if you're not understanding something okay you know i've i've had my math tutors in the past okay i've had um i've had difficulty understanding certain certain topics when it comes to mathematics okay and um so don't be afraid to ask what you're missing out on, okay? Because sometimes it might be that you are in need of a different perspective on it, okay? Um, so let me uh, let me show you what I've been kind of dealing with a little bit. So. Here's here's what what I have currently, um, and I've gotten to the point where I'm trying to do an idle animation. And well, I can use all the different art assets that um, Tasty Characters has. Okay. Um, there's there's multiple different character references okay uh, that I could do to create this abomination of animation if I really wanted to okay and I could try to work with that here's the problem though um, I don't want to be looking at it and going okay is this guy in idle or is this guy trying to move And that's that's my problem right now okay I don't I don't want to have that kind of um, I don't want to be thinking about that every single time I look at this okay right now I know that this is idle because I don't have movement enabled right at the moment okay but that's not the point point is there's um, I could go in and modify these tasty characters to do some form of idle or movement animation if I really wanted to. You know, I can go in and, you know, take each one of these images and try to come up with a idle animation, a movement animation, so on and so forth. Okay, I could I could try to do that. But here's the thing. If I really wanted to do that, if I really wanted to take this uh, the can character in this case that I'm using for the uh, humans if I'm really taking the time to redraw it to allow for 
multiple different frames for idle animation, multiple different frames for movement animation, multiple different frames for resource collection. I'm it feels as though I'm gonna be just wasting my effort. Okay, because at some point in time I want these art assets to be replaced anyway by someone with a better eye than I do when it comes to art. Um but there's there's nothing here that um you know there these these are not working the way I want it to work so therefore I'm going to attempt to draw my own art assets so do I go with pixel graphics Or do I go with something a little bit more vector-based? I'm thinking more vector-based, personally. Not, not to say that there's nothing wrong with, you know, drawing something with pixels. As you can as you can see, the further you get towards it, the the more pixels that you can see on it. But as you move on out, you know, it looks you know it looks a little bit different, obviously. <coughs> like I said, you can draw the Mona Lisa with and pixels if you really wanted to. Uh, but it's it's not going to it's not going to stand up if you get closer and closer and closer to it. Now this one is actually done pretty well. This one is, I believe, this is a vector based um, or close to vector based. I don't know, really know. Um, maybe they did pixels, but they added a, um, they added more of a fading, uh, gradient to their pixels that allowed them to, I mean, you could kind of see the squares here a little bit as well. So... So is this more pixel based or is it vector based? Mm, hard to say. I'm thinking that it's these are pixels and but they're done really well. Um, you know the this this was done by an artist. Okay. They knew, they knew what they were about how to go about doing it and they generated these characters using uh, different versions of the pixels and the like so so now that I've shown you what the problem is, now we have to figure out the solution. Now, like, like I said before, I'm not an artist. I don't really have the all the tools for an artist. I don't have a um, I don't really have like a tablet or a um, Oh. 
I don't really have any kind of drawing utensil that some artists have, okay? I mean, um, you know, all I got is my mouse, and that's about it, okay? So, I mean, I, I don't have, I don't have any tools, okay? So, I have to make do. Um, so, I'm thinking vector-based graphics. Um, and I have to deal with free software. So I'm obviously going to be having some amount of um, limitations to it. Um, and there, obviously, you know, certain vector based, ve you know, vector graphic design. Um, they're going to have the free versions and they're going to have the, um, you know, their, their pro versions, okay? I mean, these companies need to get an income as well, okay? So, um, Now, if you have um, the best software out there in the industry, such as Adobe Illustrator for one, or many of the others, more power to you. Um, they're not exactly cheap. Um, Matter of fact, let me let me uh, let me go see. All right, so you can go with twenty one bucks a month for having. Illustrator, part of the, um, for part of the cloud, um, let's see, um, It's looking like you can't even get Illustrator on its by itself anymore. It has to come with the monthly plan. It used to be that you can just kind of purchase these individual yearly, um, or you can, you know, you can purchase the individual uh, you know, software packages individually and you know, you can have it for all time without having to worry about paying a monthly price to it. But apparently they don't really do that anymore. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great for Adobe in the sense that 
they can, you know, they're they're only charging per month. So, um, but or you know, however many, however long, but not. Not great for someone that with a limited budget. I mean, great for if you're a new artist and you have 15 bucks to spend to enhance your abilities, go for it. Okay, if you have the job that can handle this 15 bucks a month and you're using it, you know, daily if not weekly, then then go for it. Okay. Um, but, or, you know, the, the 20 bucks. Okay. Or if you want to use all of them, then you're, you're paying a fair more <laughs> overall, but, um, you know, don't necessarily jump into all of them to if you're only going to be like using one. Okay. Uh, some of it might be uh, some of it might be pretty nice for you. You know, uh, you know, like. Like say you want to do a website and you want to like animate with it using your Illustrator and stuff like that. You know, adding these three together, I mean, you might as well just go with, you know, all the apps. You know, it'll be cheaper for you in the long run. So. But I don't have that luxury. Not yet. So, what software should I use? I don't really know. Uh, so, obviously, I need to search for it. Now, the creative blog here, give them some traffic here. Um, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, the creative cloud Affinity software, blah blah blah, but you know, let's let's face it, you know, not everybody can afford these tools. So start off with something a little bit smaller if you have to. Okay, don't be afraid to start with. Um, Don't be afraid to start with, you know, uh, tools that aren't mainstream. Okay. Use tools that allow for you to, um, you know, to get the experience that you need to make, uh, you know, to to build your portfolio or whatnot in order to get to that point of you can um, present it to anyone else and say this is what I've done so um, you know don't be afraid to use these um, to help yourself out okay um, now,
passieren. If I'm not mistaken, didn't I play around with this last week? Or did I play with something else entirely? I'm not sure. Hold on. Um... I, I don't I don't know. Alright, well. Um Alright, so So let's go ahead which do I wanna do You know, grab a, you know, an actual editor. Hmm. Or do I use the online version? Both of these were addressed in 
in the creative block here. Inkscape and Vector. Let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, I list Vector as number two. But Inkscape is uh, not that far behind. Okay, so let's let's kind of read up on this a little bit. Uh, so, Vector available both in browser-based web app and standalone desktop app. Vector is free editor for creating. No, thank you. Uh, with all the Vector filter shadows, fonts, and day-to-day -day design tasks, live collaboration and synchronization options are particularly handy as they are essentially enable anyone to watch you design. Um, live, meaning it's really easy to create it in tandem or send feedback. Hmm. This this could be helpful if anyone's kind of joining me on this, but at the same time, it could also be someone screwing with me too. So there's there's positive positives and negatives to that. So. Um, Let's see, Inkscape. Um, Alpha blending cloned objects and markers. Mm. Cloned objects is good. So when, so here's the thing, um, I don't know with the vector, with the vector, whether or not you can actually kind of um, clip certain sections and allow to move them around so that you can. Um, allow for uh, one of the one of the reasons why I'm I'm curious about whether or not you can actually do that is because it's pretty much essential when it comes to um, animation um, you want to try to keep with the with a similar style when it comes to animating individuals okay so you're you're taking the frame and you're kind of moving it around, okay? Like if you're if you're moving a hand, you want the hand to stay fairly the same, okay? But you're obviously changing the position to allow for that animation to happen, okay? So, um, so if you don't have that direct option of like, hey, I want to copy this and uh, adjust it, then if you don't have that option, it makes it that much harder to um, get an animation going, okay? Um, obviously, you'll, want, you'll probably want to do your own little tweaks or whatnot to make it look you know, lifelike, depending on what job you're doing, but um, you know, for for me, when I'm I'm just looking at this, and I'm like, okay, I just want to move these little nub legs to make it look like they're um, he's walking. I don't need to worry about, um, you know, uh, making the foot kind of you know, step on down and push right back off, okay? I don't I don't need that heel to toe, you know, heel up to toe up kind of movement. I don't necessarily need to worry about that, 
I'm, I'm working with 2D art here. <laughs> I don't need to go. I don't need to go full uh, detail on this. Um, uh, that's that's way too far out of my um, uh, outside of what I want to do right at the moment. <laughs> um, not to say that you know I I want to mind it per se. Um, but let's, let's let's face it. This this is gonna be the very first game that I'm making, and I'm gonna be the artist. No, <laughs> just no, not gonna happen. So, um, so we're 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 sticking with with basics now. If if Vector doesn't really have that. Which I'm I'm looking at their user interface here, and I'm not really seeing. Um, what? Um, I'm not really seeing what they have. Then. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything about like copy and pasting or anything along those lines. So Vector, while it might be interesting to have in the sense that you can actually have collaborators joining you and whatnot, uh, I think I'm going to lean more towards Inkscape right at the moment. So... Um, So first off, we're going to um, Windows sixty four bit. I don't know exactly what it it's going to be asking me to do right at the moment, so let's go ahead and try to keep certain details. Let's see. Downloads. Escape.
Okay, I, I need to go through the terms and conditions here, folks. So I want to make sure that... Um, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, my my usage of said software does not constitute them um, having rights over um, the content that you create from it. I, I kind of doubt that, but still, you want to make sure that you ref redefine print, okay, especially when it comes to businesses, okay, don't, don't, um, Don't think that um, you know if you're if you're going to try to create something for yourself and you download some software, you know all they need to do is put that we uh, we uh, uh, that you know they can just put in one little bit of information into that legalese and basically say you know we retain the rights for any works created using said tools or something like that okay I mean that's not always going to be uh, no no <laughs> no company is going to want to do that personally okay they're going to shoot themselves in the foot because there's going to be individuals that will look at it and go wait what's going on there you know and believe me that will gain traction and you won't have a business <laughs> you, you will have people that are going to demand uh, refunds of the product because you know the, you're going to have people that are like going no I'm not going to be using this if you're going to say that we we have the rights to uh, what you put here. I mean, it's it's much along the lines of, you know, Facebook, you know, all these photo sites and stuff like that, basically saying, well, you've uploaded these pictures to our websites and like we have uh, access to them, you know. So as much as some people say, no, 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 no it's, it's it's my it's my photos, you know, blah blah blah. It's like, well, Facebook's like, well, it's our hard drive space. <laughs> so, uh, be careful. Be careful with that. So, um, you know, I, to be honest, I don't know where the uh, um. You know what happened along those lines. I, I don't know whether or not that kind of went to court and what the results of that were. Um, but but just be careful because there can be companies that are kind of unscrupulous like that. So so just be aware. Now this is under uh, open source. So one would imagine that it's it really doesn't have any kind of um, problems with you using the software and having and you know and every usage of it you know the the licensing becomes yours. Uh, they're they're making sure that the software itself doesn't get. Um, modified in some fashion or another and sold off as you know something else like someone takes Enscape change changes or adds adds a couple new tools or something like that someone rebrands it for some other software and goes this is something new that we created okay that's they're trying to protect themselves against something like that so um
most of this information is talking about, you know, um, object, uh, object code, source code, so on and so forth. So, so far I haven't gotten into the, um, what happens when you're actually using said product. It's it's more protecting themselves on keeping their the Inkscape, you know, free and not modified by anyone. So um seeing the uh, the usage of it now so I'm no lawyer or anything along those lines, so um, I'm I'm hoping that I'm not seeing something in here, you know, and completely missing the implications. Hopefully, that's not the case. So. to another spot here.
Oh yeah, okay. No problems there. Let's install Inkscape and let's see what we can do here. Let's see what damage we can do. Okay, so while it's doing the downloading and installing, um, now I need to figure out what um, I'm going to be doing with this. Um, now there's been, I, I showed off a tutorial last week about someone um, using a um, um, using shapes to kind of draw um, you know to create a character okay and that's probably what I'm going to be doing as well trying to use um, use shapes to try to um, to kind of create you know some kind of sprite for each one and then be able to um, you know try to c copy that and um, allow for different uh, animations for it, okay, depending on, on what I'm looking for here. Okay, I'm going to be looking for the idle animation, I'm going to be looking for, you know, walking, which is going to be slightly different, well, okay, um, I might want to change. Um, um, I would. I would love to be able to say if the human is going to be um, going to the northeast. He walks through the northeast with you know his back to you kind of thing. If he's walking southwest you kind of see him and kind of walking towards you um that that kind of um that kind of style to it but um at the same time i don't know if well i don't have all the time in the world to be working on these art assets okay i, I don't want to be spending multiple different weeks on creating these art assets. Um, now, maybe I can do, um, maybe I can do different um, animation sets, even though they're animating the same you know, use use the same frames for them, but set them up with different animation styles so that, um, you know, if, if I want to, I can, um, you know, if, if someone was to kind of join me on this, you know, with their art aptitude, okay, 
and you know um, all right so here let me let me kind of explain so um, when when you have this this map okay you have the characters you have the uh, agents going off in you know different directions you know east west northwest northeast southwest southeast okay um and when they're walking in that general direction you can change how they look based off of what direction they're they're walking in okay you could have this guy with his back you know to you walking up to the northeast or you can have him walking towards you you know going up to the northeast you know you can have him walking to the side you know you can have him kind of walking to the side you can have him kind of walking towards you you can have him walking away from you it all depends on your how you want the uh the how you want to kind of visualize that movement to um, to the player, okay? Um, now, for me, I'm probably going to use the exact same animation, no matter what. I, I don't have I, I don't have the patience to to draw those different perspectives. Um, but I might be able to set it up so that if I know, you know, if, if the, if uh, the character knows that it has to go to the Northeast, for example, okay. I can set it up so that the um, so that the animation will show you know the animate the animator controller you know I could have the human movement in this case I could have it go okay human movement to the east, human movement to the west, human movement to the northeast, human movement to the northwest. You know, it, I could have different movements based off of, um, you know, uh, which tile they're going to, okay? And, um, you know, I can have the triggers set to handle those those individual movements, and then I can have the animations with the specific frames. Um, you know, it, I can I can change I can duplicate the the art. Okay, the animations. You know. Uh, you know, make copies of them to say that this, the, the, the movement to the side, okay, um, I can have this go for east, and I can also do this for west as well, if I really wanted to, okay, um, and, you know, the amount of animations that I put into it, Okay, I can I can kind of duplicate them saying, okay, so the one arm movement is human movement east one. Okay, but I could also do the exact same movement for human movement west one. Okay, so as I'm continuously moving, okay, I can put both of them as um, the you know east and west okay so that if later on I want to do something more if I want to actually add in you know those different visuals 
Okay, I can. Or if someone wants to join me on this, they can add different um, different perspectives to allow for that kind of movement. We just replaced files with those different art assets. So now, um, instead of it doing the same movement for east and west, now it's doing, um, hey, I'm going east, now I'm going west. You see what I'm saying? So um, all, it, all it would take would be a file replacement, you know, keeping the name the same, but changing the art to change that perspective. Now, it might be fairly easy to do with Inkscape, maybe. We'll see. Um, but right now, I'm not going to try to push it because um, so let's let's kind of um, let me bring up oh, hold on. Let me bring up my notepad here. Um, all right, so um, right now I'm looking at, um, you know, just just the humans in general right at the moment. Okay. And that's a lot of art for this, okay? Just the just the movement alone is gonna take a couple images to handle. Now, you can you can fudge with it a little bit, okay? To uh, I mean. You could um, so, like for example, let, let me go back to um, let's go ahead and shut that down. So let's go back to the human character here. So let's say we want to do a movement for him, right? Well, he doesn't really have a you know from this from this angle he has the staff in in his right hand from from our perspective here um but he doesn't really have a left arm so if you really wanted to do a um a 2D animation for this guy. All you really need to do would would be move move that arm from from down below to slightly higher, meaning that it's he's he's doing the um you know uh you know slight movement with his kind of walk. Okay, you just need to do that. Um, you need, just need to keep the original image. And then maybe do one where he's doing the upswing, and then you have his legs do a like put them like super close to each other. You can have um, here, let me. You know, there's can't really. So, 
let's let's you know say we're we're looking at his legs, right? So you can have these legs be like right next to each other, or you can have them uh, on top of each other. You know, to make it look like his leg movements are walking. Okay, to give that visual imp impression that his legs are moving and have them go back to the original image. So like, you know, the the arm is moving up, the legs are right on top of each other, and then you go back to the original stance and you give the impression that they're walking. Okay. So um so you don't need you don't need much, okay, uh to to give that impression. Now if if the if you were to have an art asset that you can kind of see their legs meaning that um you know you you give the impression that one leg is closer to the uh, to you than the other then you're going to have to kind of do a little bit more work to show that the animation is um, uh, you know you're, you're going to have to kind of work on that animation a little bit more because you're now um, having the art uh, with a little bit more of a field of view depth of view perspective to it so you know I don't get that perspective from this guy's legs right at the moment so um, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this and uh, it will allow for you to um, do very simple animations with it if you really wanted to um, or you could have the um, the art uh, have a different look to it that allows for you to, to you're going to be needing to change up the art style a little bit to handle it so So, um, we got some work cut out for us because not only am I going to have to do this for the humans, meaning I got all this to work on, but I also got the enemies. And we're talking multiple different enemies here. Okay, and at some point in time, I might want to do something for resources as well. Okay, you know, like I said, if if I don't have anyone joining me on this to help me with the art, then I'm gonna have to do it myself. Okay, I do not want what I currently have to be the um to be what. I'm going to be seeing, okay, it's it's not going to be, um, I don't want to, um, you know, I want to, I want to be able to have something that stands out for what player is going to be looking at okay art assets like like the tree doesn't really help the player understand what they're trying to get okay what they're trying to accomplish what they're trying to um, 
what they're trying to build, what they're trying to collect. Okay, so, um, you know, these these four different resources that I have looks nothing like what I want to visually show for the game. Okay. Well, I mean the tree a little bit, but um, but here's the thing. I want to show... Um, I want to be able to show how much the players kind of collected from said tree, okay, from said forest, okay. The trees will eventually dwindle down, okay. I'm not saying I want, you know, one big tree. I want, a, like, a representation of a forest so that, you know, as they're cutting down more trees, getting more resources, the the amount of trees shown dwindles down over time. So, um, so I gotta make that, um, I want to be able to take you know the art assets for you know take a take a standard tree okay make one and then be able to kind of copy that make multiple you know and then just kind of add additional ones to make it look like a forest overall so um okay we're going to go ahead and but the Inkscape on the programming right at the moment. So let's go ahead and launch it. So let me let me start with the um Let me start with the resources because those are going to be probably the easiest to really do for the most part. So um, now I want to try to keep the um, Keep this to the point of, um, you know, keep the size fairly small overall. So, first thing that I want to do is I want to check to see if how I can limit the size of this. Is a brand new window. Okay, well, not, not necessarily what I want to do there. Um, document properties. Let's see. Um, see now, this is this is a this is a problem because you know I don't want it to be. Um, I don't want it to be a full page. You know, I don't want it to be a full letter size okay I need it to be smaller um, now they're referring to millimeters here um, ah there we go okay so I need something that um, you know, a little bit bigger than the icon, so um. okay, so let's. Check 
checkerboard background. scroll bar is kind of changing the uh, how where it kind of stands at the moment um, now let's see I want it to be you know transparent or you know I want the background to be um, you know, to be gone. So it's it's not like a standard white. It's it's transparent so that or that I think that's the word I'm looking for. So that the image itself can be kind of isolated. You know, it's not uh you can kind of put it on overlay it to another visual and it will um it will take the that spacing, but everything else will be shown. Okay, if I have if I have it as if I have this tree right now here, you know, with a white background. Okay, I'm going to be seeing um, the um, you know the white square along with the tree and I don't really want that okay so uh, I want to make sure that I have something very similar to this so I need to make sure that that's that's occurring how I want it to now let's see um, zoom in okay so So Do I get the background to be kind of transparent? I'm not. I'm not keeping this. I'm just kind of um, allowing it, it to. Um, to help me figure out where. So that I can make sure that I'm not screwing myself up here. So, um, See, this is this is looking good to me. Okay, being able to um, being able to kind of select certain styles and be able to you know intersect, exclude, division, so on and so forth. So that's looking like it's going to be um, pretty decent here. Um,
before I hop into a um, uh, tutorial, I want to uh, interpolate, insert something of a different nature into something else. Hmm. Transparency, right? That's what I'm kind of worried about right at the moment. It's like Thinking that it should be a little bit easier than that, but uh, well, I mean, new new user to a new software, so um, okay. So um, image and uh, image. What's what's 
just the crutch. Overlay. Uh, logo here which is a pdf file um, and it's a white version of my logo so i'm going to click open there again i'm not going to change any settings and you can see now it's brought in my white logo with no background you can see through i can move it around and you can see the background image showing through if i want to scale it i just hold down the control key i'm on windows on a windows machine right now and move my mouse and that'll scale my logo down to size now, if I wanted to change the color of that logo, what I can do is I can choose the um, the paint bucket tool, which is this one here, and then you've got your colors all the way along the bottom. So say I wanted to, let's just say I wanted to change it to this, this yellow or orange. There you go. All I've done is just pick the color, and because the logo is selected, it automatically changes to the color that I'm selecting. Um, now, you could have imported a, a red logo or a blue logo as long as it's a vector file you can click on the paint bucket and then choose your color and it will change your logo to whatever color no matter what it started off as so i hope that helps you out michael and um yeah thanks for uh leaving a comment on my channel it's great to know that uh, people are watching and i hope you find this video useful cheers Okay, sorry about that. All right. Um, the it'd be nice if the background here was. Similar to the background there, that way I absolutely know that I don't really have any kind of problems with the background being 
an issue, but I don't really know. Um, so, Okay, so let me see. Um, so let's let's try to do something here. Okay, we're looking at a 520, uh, 512 by 512 image right now. Okay, so right now I want to I want to address design a tree. Okay. Um, so how so let's I want to try to have it fairly centered here. Right. in here what's what's going on apparently it doesn't draw it hmm Okay, apparently I'm having a hard time just trying to even draw shapes on this. So I guess I'm gonna need to look at an actual honest to gosh tutorial for it. I was thinking, hey, I draw a rectangle, you know, pick a specific color for it and it will fill in that, but I guess not. So, I'm not sure what's going on here, so. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll have to kind of do a little bit more tutorial work on this, so let's see. Um, does Inkscape have its own set of tutorials? Um, 
based off of what they're saying, it's exactly what I did, but... F4. Alright, uh, first off, let's go ahead and get rid of this guy. Because we, we want to try to keep with a certain uh, same style to everything. So, So if I, I don't, you know, this, it's saying that it's supposed to fill uh, default rectangles come up with a blue fill and black stroke outline. Well, what's, what's going on here then? <laughs> um, Let's see, we want, um, if, we're, if, we're, if we're doing like a, a tree trunk, okay, we obviously want to try to uh, go with a uh, brownish color, so um, brown. So. A two A. It's fine. It's fine. still not doing what I want it to do and that does not look like brown that looks more red than brown I mean look 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 at the two here. Those don't match whatsoever. Oh boy. I'm gonna be in trouble. <laughs> Why is it slowly filling in there? Why is this a thing?
am I missing here? trying to draw the square and it's not even filling it in for me so I'm missing something Spell Inkscape right. draw this you can draw that it's like <laughs> I just want to draw a simple shape right at the moment <laughs> Select your lips, open up the fill and stroke dialog window by going to object fill and stroke, control shift F. Transparency is the first step of the system. Gray image. Um, no transparency.
This is very odd. So, this is looking more reddish than anything else, too. Okay, so, this isn't exactly correct, then? Okay, um... more brown than anything else. Um, stroke paint. It's fine. Uh -huh, okay, so... Maybe that's what's going on. It's it's seeing it as completely opaque, so we want there we go. That's that's what was going on. It was it was being set for completely opaque, so that's why I was causing uh, having such a hard time with that. So we want it to be that to be thinner. We're gonna move it to try to be more centered. Now can I actually center it here? Hmm. Let's see. seem like it wanted to do anything. Yeah, let me let me move this up here. Line in this 
attribute. It's not wanting to do anything on this. Okay. Oh, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Um, This isn't really doing anything to for this particular object. Okay, well, hmm. these are doing then I could be screwing myself up a little bit with that so um, all right let's let's see what this is all about that I would like and I would like to center the Batman symbol within this shape now instead of eyeballing it here's what I'm going to do I'm going to go up to object go down to align and distribute and I will select both. Now you've got choices on the align and distribute menu on the right hand side. It can be relative to the largest object, last selected, first selected, smallest object, the page, the drawing, the selection area. I'm going to go with the biggest object because I want the Batman symbol to be centered within my cut line. And then it's simply choosing the desired oh, okay in so case, that's that's what that's what the problem the is on this I have to actually go to and I want to center on the lines and I want the page the so center and center and, and there we go okay the Batman that was that was the issue the it was trying to um, center it based off the selection area. So I'm I was trying to do it with page, so I was trying to go with the selection area. Okay. <laughs> so good to know. Alright. Uh let's see. Um but at the same time I don't necessarily want it um I want it slightly down a little bit so that I can um so that I can kind of put my tree on top of it. So uh, now I want to be able to create a triangle on this, but I'm I'm making the assumption that um, you know with the triangle being three corners and all, this should work. Now we're going to change the fill for into oh I didn't want that one. Come ah uh, no <laughs> we're, we want a new object here so new object there we go um three corners green now oh okay. So I don't have a good eye for whether or not this is, if it's going to be straight or not. Um, I mean, thing 
that we can do is we can go to the alignment. Uh, I need to do the uh, shift control A a little bit more, or learn that a little bit more. We can just do the center on vertical. And then we will run just like this, center on vertical, and there we go. Make sure it has leaves. Yeah, no, no, Gabe. I'm, I'm not that, I'm not that good of an artist. <laughs> um. All right. So, so let's say that this is the tree that I want to make now. Um. Now let's say that. Let's uh, go ahead and save this. Let's see, we'll go ahead and put this under the programming folder for now. Let's see, uh, we'll do Got a new tank on uh, War Thunder. Nice there, bud. Nice. Okay, so let's see. Want a. Let's see. Uh, we're going to want to be making multiple copies of this to um, to kind of give the perspective of hey this is going to expand or or we're going to the idea right at the moment is to just kind of have something that will have you know a large forest being reduced down to like you know a, a small forest or you know like a single tree uh, so as the resources deplete then the amount of trees being shown is going to deplete as well so um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, I just don't know how many I want to kind of show on this um let's see I'll just go ahead and say tree one on this and then we'll go ahead now there should be a way for me to group these two together let's see So now I have a full grouping of of both. So if I do control C to kind of copy the two, if I click out of it and do a paste, there we go. Okay, so I can I can kind of do multiple kind of overlays on this so so now we're going to go and save as again and this time we're going to do uh, tree 2 And we're going to do some more paste here. Let's kind of lock in place a little bit here. So, Let's 
guy down here a little bit. Try not to get this to it's not wanting to kind of stay in the center, it's it's kind of locking with others. Let's see. Um let's not do the snap. Let's nope, it's not wanting to do that. Okay. Go ahead and remove the snapping too, and there we go. So now we're going to do let's see shift control S, okay. forest here. thinking I'll just go ahead and set this up for like uh, um, like eight diff different images so that I can just kind of go I can have this as something that I'll just kind of fill up this entire screen so um, or this entire amount and then when I have the um, when I can I'll, I'll use the like a tree 8 image for example um, you know having the full visual being set with a lot of trees and then as resources get depleted from it, then I can just go seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So that's that's the mentality right at the moment. So um but we're we're taking it kind of slow in that we're um I'm I'm building I'm starting from the minimal and I'm just kind of building up to where I want to show the full forest you know better to start with the one image and then just kind of build up from it so just kind of pasting right at this moment in time because I'm not really caring about the um, how much it, it kind of looks per se on this you know because the force is never um, you know never uh, symmetrical or anything along those lines so okay so oh damn it fuck 
I just saved over my tree five. Fuck. Um, we're going to save this for six. We're going to go ahead and I think that's what I had for five. Now let's go ahead and, yeah, there we go. Um, there we go. Yes, I want to replace it, thank you. All right, so now we'll go ahead and uh, put everything back in. getting really close to the bottom edge here and that's not great for um, what I kind of want to do so I need it to kind of be a little bit more centered hmm. Then I go ahead and save it. This will be seven. Let's see, what I'm going to do this time around is. So can I select all of them? Oop. Hmm. Just did a copy. Let's do a paste again. So if I do a this to the back. save that for the full forest and there we go so I mean if you know I do um, you know we have eight we have seven which isn't is a lot less than what I had for eight. So we'll see if this actually kind of works out as intended. Let me see if I can actually add this in for 
for my image for the tree right now. So we're going to go ahead and let's see, we're going to go new folder. Oh, no, I don't want it actually inside that. Um, be in assets there. New folder. Um, Jim's drawings. <laughs> to have inside there we're going to have the have resources yeah, nope wait hold on I still want it on Jim's drawings there. Don't don't put folders within folders here without humans. No, wait. What did it just like? No, I didn't ah uh. <laughs> No. Go away. I didn't want that. Yes, delete that. Thank you. Um, oops. Select that folder. Goes. Tablets. Okay. So now, um, on the resources, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder on the there for um, trees. Let's see. Let me, let me make sure that I'm naming them correctly here. Um, I called it forest in here, so. So let's go ahead and uh, rename that to forest. Uh, sunstones. So there's that. Now let's see. Assets. Can I do a copy and paste to here? I don't want 
can't do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to do create empty. That put it underneath this. Hmm, that didn't really work. go about doing that so I'm gonna need to figure out how how I can set up the these SV, MVG files into the uh, to what I need here for this so um, to be able to I kind of want to keep the um, a single prefab under this game object here Can't seem to select the multiple assets to be placed underneath that. Um, So the, the idea is for the animation to go from 8 to 1, but I, I want it to only switch between the animation if, if it hits a certain trigger. So um, So if and once it's on tree one and it hits the trigger again and that there's no more resources left on there then I need to completely remove it meaning that I need to um, have it completely disappear completely removed from the um, 
from it, but we need to figure out how to go about uh, changing this into something that works. Um, let's see. So we're going to go ahead and Unity SVG image. Why can't I select the SVG files? I mean, they're there. So what's what's going on here? Maybe I need to actually get the package in there. Maybe I need to get the right package in. Um,
is here. Uh, town. Need to import the package vector graphics with a new package manager under package manager. Okay. Import the package vector graphic mm, vector graphics, okay. Vector graphics, okay. Install. those up interestingly enough. to kind of keep with the same size and placement. See like for example when I'm I'm looking at tree four here versus tree one. 
the the size difference kind of changes on me, and it's it's not ideal. So. That didn't really work as out as well as I wanted it to. See, it's it's not really showing the uh, um, showing them individually. So. I do Let's remove that for right now. Um, let's see. 
we want to be able to set up the we want to be able to do animations again and I'm blanking on how to go about doing it again god damn it um, let's see uh, the to the existing animator controller that's already on the play what's called an animator controller which is going to allow us to make and then we're going to give this a name we're going to call this player uh, slice into multiple sprites for more information about sprite sheets and sprites you can see the information linked below in this case we're going to grab the first set of frames here which are the player idle animation and i did that by clicking the first frame and then shift clicking the last frame that i wanted I'm going to take these and drag them onto the player prefab, and then we're going to give this a name. We're going to call this player idle. So this is the animation that's going to play when the player is not doing anything. We're going to put this in our animations folder. You'll notice when we did that. Hmm. So it's not really giving me the. Um, the different kind of animations it's you know it's it's not setting it up as um, its own animations so in the previous video we looked at setting up the project and demonstrated the finished product in this video we're going to create animations for the player and enemy units from the provided sprite sheet and also set up the player and enemy prefabs. So let's create a new scene. And we're going to start by creating the player prefab along with the animations that go with him. So we're going to choose game object, create empty, and we're going to label that player. In our folder sprites, we have a sprite sheet. Now this has already been sliced into multiple sprites. For more information about sprite sheets and sprites, you can see the information linked below. In this case, we're gonna grab the first set of frames here, which are the player idle animation. And I did that by clicking the first frame and then shift clicking the last frame that I wanted. I'm gonna take these and drag them onto the player prefab. And then we're gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this player idle so this is the animation that's going to play with okay so i tried doing that with this but when i tried to move it up here it didn't give me the option for um animation it just said oh okay you want all these under this one particular game object so it will add them so that's not exactly what i'm trying to do right at this moment uh, I want it to um, be able to uh, you know I want to be able to you know have these set in a certain animation that will only get triggered based off of, you know, uh, the right conditions. So, um, but they're not being shown as a, as a particular animation. They're, they're just kind of being set under everything there. So how, How do I 
I set up an animation with these with you. So forest artist. So if I put you under animations Then we go here, forced and harvest underneath that. So now we put the forced animator controller underneath that. And use this for first harvest. Let's let's make sure that I'm doing this kind of correctly there. Hmm. Okay, so it the prefab here does not actually have a um, an animation. It has an animator. So this isn't necessary. This is what's necessary. So now we're going to go ahead and. Um, Move this down here. And now we're going to So
maybe I'm not doing this as well as what I want it to be. I might be kind of screwing up here a little bit. So um, right now, um, even though I, even though I'm putting all eight into this animation, I might be kind of screwing it up in, in that uh, it might want to you know cycle through all eight of them and not really show anything or it, it won't allow for me to manually s select which image to go with um, so
Hmm, this might not be what I want. So, trying to... So the idea was to just have the... Um, you know, have a single object that will, you know, go from tree eight there down to tree one. But apparently it doesn't, if I set an animation up with that, then it's gonna just kind of cycle through these over and over and over again, you know, like much like how I had the human. Okay, it's it's not gonna. Uh, it's not really gonna work. Um, so. Okay, so so this isn't what I'm gonna want here. I want So let's see. Um, let's 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 redo this here. We're 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 screwing this up right at the moment. So um, close that. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that for now. Okay. So so first things first. We want to create an empty game object we're going to go ahead and rename this forest um, go ahead and get rid of this okay so now um, I want these to be able to kind of select between the two. Let's see, hold on, spread it again.
ghost there. This is the right way of going about doing this. I think I'm probably shooting myself in the foot a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and make the rest here. here and we're going to move these up here as well. Okay. between these particular sprites individually.
the image per Welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be um, one that people have been asking me about to just re update and cover. It's going to be creating a UI and making it pop up or appear on a trigger. So, all you need to do is when you start a new scene, uh, you want to have an FPS controller. You want to have the standard assets, and if you don't already, you can bring those in. You can right click, um, import custom, and bring in the characters, or you can download them from the store. I've just got a plane here which you can see so we can walk around on it. So you want to be able to create a trigger so we can make this happen. So you want to go game object, 3D object and maybe create a cube. It doesn't really matter what primitive shape you use, you can use anything you want. I'll make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it. So that's all well and good we've positioned it in our scene. We want to go on the right hand side in the inspector and go and set this to is trigger. And then from there what we want to do is click back on our FPS controller if you've made sure you've dragged that in and you want to make sure that it's got a tag of player and all you do is click the drop down and um, choose player unless you need to add the tag to create it because we're going to reference that in the script so that's that for the trigger what you might want to do is also you know, create the UI element so for Unity 5 we can go game object UI and we can add an image this will automatically add our canvas and our event system now the canvas is just the main thing that controls the uh, way it changes on resolution and things like that. But the image is what we're going to be able to change and make appear. So if we are at the top um, in the Unity, we go to 2D and we just press F when once we select an image, it'll zoom all the way in to what we have in the sort of 2D uh, UI space. So what we can do on this image is if we want to reset it to the middle. So what we can do on the um, rectangle transforms is in the drop down at the top we want to right click and press reset and it will reset the position to zero 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 so in our game you can see it's directly in the center. Now you can add your own source image sprite whatever you need to because you can bring in an image and just make sure it's a UI or sprite and then you can yeah, I think this is what I need. So once we've got this that's absolutely fine we can go on and start making a script so we can right click in the project panel go here and choose C sharp script and we can call this UI appear. Once we've done that we can open that up in Visual Studio. Now in our class that we've got here we can start by writing the script we need to do. But first of all if we want to reference something from the Unity UI we need to Hmm. This might be a little bit harder than I imagined.
see. How am I going to go about doing this? Maybe I'm just, I shouldn't even bother with the animator on this. Maybe I need to just um, swap out the assets when I need to. But I want the transition to be fairly smooth. I don't want I don't want it to be like, you know, uh, you know. I, I want it to be happening in between frames. So, or you know, I want it to happen during the frame itself. So, hmm. animation isn't gonna cut it for that so that's why I'm I'm if, if I try to do animation it's just gonna want to try to transition through all eight images you know um, you know per per frame so that's that's not gonna work for me hmm doing this. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe I should uh, hold off on trying to do all that for next week. Um, maybe I should just work on just drawing out the these art assets that I want to draw out. Or at least again you know, make some generic uh, versions that will allow for me to that will still work uh, for my intentions because this is a better visual of what I want than say um, this at the very least so 
So as much as this is really plain looking and um, you know not exactly uh, the best trees ever I'll admit that I mean you know I'm, I'm not an artist so um, you know when you when you compare that versus this you can tell that this is obviously better visually um, descriptive tree but at the same time this is something that I got from another and the, you know this is what I got from the saying land forest assets so um, I could use this and try to stack them on top of each other much like what uh, I was doing here but uh, I would require me to kind of upload everything into a new file and I don't even know if I if these uh, particular art assets are vector based anyway so uh, let's not get into that those kind of headaches so this will be fine for now Again, like I said before, if I ever find someone that is willing to uh, work on these art assets um, to replace these, then then it'll just be a naming convention. They'll hand a better uh, asset to me, you know, with the same name of tree eight, and then it will just be a complete replace. But for the time being, this is better visually of what I want um, to show instead of just a single tree um, but let's let's worry about um, trying to get the the object to change images maybe next week uh, let me see if I can do a um, we'll, we'll just create a new um, we'll create one of the next images on this um, hmm, how do I want to do sunstones you know what let's let's go with the holy holy water pool that's that might be a little bit easier for me to kind of work with a little bit um, something to kind of visually change so first off let's go ahead and change the dimensions of this again uh, to pixel 512 by 512 down Let's see um Let's see we'll save this as a template here real quick um Let's see G Let's see uh, let's add. going to zoom on in here we're going to so the idea for the the pools is that you know the um, the humans are going to be going up to the pools and they're going to be kind of you know uh, gathering some of the water so that they can take back so I'm going to need something that is um, you know uh, basically we're going to just kind of do uh, two two circles here 
Let's see, let's, let's try to angle it a little bit so it gives that impression of uh, where it's it's a well instead of a uh, um, you know a, in, instead of a, you're not going to be able to see straight down the well. You want that kind of perspective of uh, you're you're looking at an angle so I can increase the water level over time. So um, we're going to basically have two, two circles here. Um, and, uh, oh that one out but we want to select the other one that is inside here to be on top oh no no don't do that to me we're gonna I need to move you okay and now we're going to go ahead and Fill that in with the center there. So I'm going to go ahead and move you guys to the center of the page there. So page. There we go. Now, now that it's centered ish, um, I mean, I can maybe draw some additional. Let's uh, let's let's put a cylinder on here so that we can get um, So we're going to draw the same color. We're going to go ahead and move this to the back there. So now we have kind of a, um, you know, the pool ish look to it or you know we, we have something that looks looks like a well for the most part but it's not done yet so let's go ahead and um, okay now we're gonna move this up here Now, we want to try to get rid of that top line there to kind of give it the impression that it's we're, we're have a little bit more of a curve on this than anything else. But I don't know how to go about erasing this top curve. Um, That's okay, but once again, we're having the same problem with the bottom line there.
see, how can I get rid of this bottom line? Um, didn't really work now, did it? Process shorts are not part of the ink script. So you have to build them yourself. Create a version of this desired rectangle with strokes on all four sides. Duplicate it. Turn off the stroke of one of the rectangles. Fill the other ones. So if I move this out, create a version of the desired rectangle with strokes on all four sides. Done. Uh, duplicate it. So duplicate. Turn off the stroke. Uh, 400 triangles, rectangles, and fill for the other ones. Okay, so stroke and fill, no stroke. And then no fill.
rectangle A behind rectangle B if it isn't already. Selected object on rectangle B. Exactly, do I do that? Select an object to pass. Um, I'm looking for here.
this. Okay, the roots like to down to the path. Select the Saturn and the desired one. just happened. I didn't want to delete that completely. Okay. Let's just select those. Delete that. And select this. Oh, come on. Select it, please. Snap. Now we're going to move both of you here. them. I'm going to go ahead and bring that right back down here again. There we go. Now we're going to there we go. Ta-da! Yay! Alright, so this is um, the basic well for now. Um, I might want to uh, gonna go ahead and group all that together. Now we're going to go ahead and align you. Oh, hold on. Um, to keep you fairly centered on the image there. Okay. Right. Um is that a little too large? I don't really know. Um maybe it is. Uh but I've run out of time for today there folks. Uh I'm gonna go ahead and close everything down. Um this will have to wait until um
for next time. So, um, only pool. Let's see, we're going to do one there. Meaning that it's pretty much empty. I'm going to obviously change this a little bit. Um, I want to, maybe, maybe I can modify this a little bit more. Uh, maybe draw in some greenery or something like that. Make it look like it's an ancient pool, whatnot. Maybe. I don't really know. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not, I'm not Mr. Artist here, so, um, so we're going to go ahead and leave that there for now. We'll come back to it next week. Uh, we'll continue working on these and um, then, I mean, because these, these, these are going to be like the easiest ones to, to make, you know, the, the resources are going to be the easiest ones because all it, all it is, is, you know, full and then partial, you know, until they're completely gone. So I don't necessarily need to worry about that. Then I'll start getting into, um, uh, creating the humans and the enemies and seeing if I can actually generate something decent that way. Um, Again, I welcome any kind of input anyone has concerning drawing style or uh, hell, if, if you are an artist that wants to join me on this, I welcome you. Um, I, I'd prefer someone with a better eye than, than me trying to work on this, but I mean, like I said before, this is, this is what I this is all I got right now. <laughs> um, me doing work on using free tools and and you know trying to you know build this so that uh, you guys can kind of stay along with me on this. So. Um, So you're, you're joining me on this journey. So, but with that, that's going to be the end of today's stream. So, uh, if you have any interest in what has occurred on the stream or previous streams, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. The link is down below. So feel free to go there, see the progress that I've made on <laughs> progress. Um, you know, I've, I've had some diff difficult bumps along this journey, but um, it it's helpful that I get through these bumps, learn them, so that I don't have to worry too much about um, not losing track of it later. You know, it'll, it'll kind of stick in my mind the amount of work that I do in this, so um but it's it's going to be all there on my youtube channel so feel free to check that out if you'd like um i also have links to my discord my my discord my patreon and my twitter account down below as well so feel free to check that out if you'd like um I have a schedule of everything that I'm currently doing down below on my Twitch channel, so feel free to check that out. And I have link, um, and I just want to let you know that I do this daily from 2 to 6 p.m. PST, so you'll always find me on Twitch, you know, doing something on my schedule, whatever day it is, um, between those times. So. Unless, of course, something occurs, and if that happens, then I'll uh, I'll keep you up to date on either my Discord or my uh, Twitter account. Normally, it's on my Twitter account. It's fairly quick and easy, so um, you'll be able to kind of see if if 
you know, if I might have like a problem or something like that, and I'll I'll let you folks know. So, or feel free to you know shoot me a a, a message or something like that. You know, ask me how I'm doing, <laughs> because then I'll be able to go. Yeah, not feeling all that great today or something like that, and you know it's. You know, I'll, I'll I'll be able to interact with you guys uh, if that's the case. But that is going to be it for today. So, um, still a lot more work to be done on the art. Uh, then it's a matter of trying to figure out how to get them working the way I want them to work on Unity. So, uh, we'll see what happens there. But for now, that's where I'm going to go. go ahead and stop it. So thank you very much for there, folks. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay indoors. And I'll see you strangers next time.